Bag it up. I like the way you work it. No diggity. I like to bag it up. I like to bag it up. <laughs> wow. Okay. Sorry. Well, that didn't go according to plan. Hello, I'm Paul Barry. Welcome to Media Watch. It's great to be back. And a big thank you to Janine Perrett and Jeremy Fernandez for sitting in while I was taking a break. As for Carl's dancing on the Today Show, well, that wasn't the only thing that didn't go to plan last Friday, with Nine forced to apologise for a far more serious error. And earlier this morning, we ran vision that was reportedly of the suicide bombings in Kabul. In fact, that vision was not from Afghanistan overnight. Sometimes we make mistakes, we own them, and we apologise for them. And good on them for fessing up. But today grabbed the footage off social media and ran it a dozen times before anybody twigged it was wrong. Here it is again. The second blast was caught on camera. <laughs> at an airport hotel recently home to foreign nationals. The footage is actually of an Israeli airstrike on Gaza five days earlier. So, an easy mistake to make? Not really. One look at the Gaza footage suggests an explosion far more powerful than a suicide bomb. And the other clue is the night sky. The attack on Kabul airport happened late in the day. And you can see it is still daylight in Nine's report on Kabul as victims were treated on the scene. It is a reminder yet again for producers to double check any footage circulating on social media before whacking it straight on air. But now, to trouble at the ABC, where one of its flagship programmes has come in for criticism. And we're not talking about the four corners you've just seen and the hysterical response from News Corp, which produced some two dozen stories and opinion pieces screaming ABC bias. Remarkably this morning, the Australian also had the nerve to accuse the ABC of groupthink. Yes, seriously. But no, the Barbs are in a sometimes damaging editorial review sent to the ABC board last week. Conducted by X4 Corners reporter Chris Masters, one of Australia's most decorated journalists, and respected academic Rod Tiffin, this was the programme in its sights. What do you think caused this fire? Arson. It's arson. Arson, yeah. The cover-up was monumental. There is somebody that got away with murder. It's time for the truth. Exposed. Carol Meldrum Hanna and Patrick Begley's three-part series on the 1979 fire at Sydney's Luna Park, in which seven people lost their lives, took 15 months to make and cost a whopping $2 million. That's enough for around 10 Four Corners, or up to 20 Australian stories or foreign correspondents. But it delivered more than four hours of stylish, well-researched and, at times, hard-hitting television. The fifth witness is Frank Boitano. Then... He was a 16-year-old Lunar Park employee. Now, he is a lawyer with his own practice, specialising in criminal law. And according to this statement provided to the inquest, Frank saw a bikey outside the ghost train when the fire broke out. Exposed claimed the Lunar Park fire was deliberately lit by a group of bikies on the orders of a notorious Sydney crime boss, Abe Saffron. It accused crooked New South Wales cops of working to cover up the murders, and alleged that Saffron then gained the lease on the Harbourside property via the corrupt intervention of Premier Neville Rann. As you'll see in the episode tonight, the allegations that extend right up to the upper echelons of power, they're really, really big. Mm. We're talking about fingering the former Premier of New South Wales that was involved in corrupt dealings in the manipulation of a piece of Crown land. So you really can't get higher than that. The New South Wales coroner is now considering a new inquest into the fire to examine what the state's attorney general has called new and compelling evidence. And the state government has offered a $1 million reward. A pretty good result for a TV programme, you might think. And the Tiffin Masters Review praises the depth and breadth of its research. But, as nine newspapers noted, not all of the claims it exposed were entirely new. Way back in 2007, the Sydney Morning Herald's Kate McClymont accused Abe Saffron of ordering the fire in this front-page story. The ABC omitted to mention that. And others were scathing about the claims in Exposed that the New South Wales Premier was involved in corruption and cover-up. Lunar Park fire. Neville Rand burnt at ABC Stake. Three weeks after the programme went to air, the Australian's Troy Brampston blasted the ABC series, telling readers... The documentary lacked verifiable evidence and relied on innuendo, hearsay and smear. 
It does not validate the arson theory or that it was ordered by Saffron. And if there is no arson, there cannot be a conspiracy. Echoing his verdict was former ABC managing director David Hill, who was working for RAN at the time of the fire. Hill slammed Exposed as sloppy journalism that had breached ABC editorial guidelines and told the Australian the claims about RAN were... Preposterous, without any evidence whatsoever. And the character assassination of the former Premier was disgraceful. And other RAN supporters were piling on too, led by former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull, RAN's one-time business partner, Labour Premiers Bob Carr and Barry Unsworth, and ex-Sydney Morning Herald editor Milton Cockburn, and ex-current affair boss David Hurley, who demanded an inquiry to clear their former employer's name. Cockburn also made a formal complaint to the ABC, alleging the programme had breached the ABC's editorial standards of accuracy and fairness. First, by relying on uncorroborated sources for its key allegations, and second, by not offering RAN's defenders a right of reply. The ABC dismissed his complaint and concluded no breach had occurred. And by then, the ABC's editorial director, Craig McMurtry, had told a Senate committee, Exposed did not need to back up its allegations about RAN with multiple sources because... The matter concerning Mr RAN was not a, a focus of the documentary series. McMurtry also argued it was not the ABC, but others who had pointed the finger. It certainly is not the case that Exposed was making the allegation. And Managing Director David Anderson then added a further defence to the claims about RAN, saying... They were presented as allegations, not proven facts. Those excuses, in my view, are extraordinary. And they have raised the stakes significantly for ABC management. Because the Tiffin Masters Review, published quietly a few hours ago, has found against the programme makers in concluding that Exposed did accuse Neville Rand of corruption and complicity in covering up arson, and did not have enough evidence to do so. Now, surely follows from that, ABC guidelines were breached, but luckily for the ABC, Tiffin and Masters were not asked to address that question. So the board has not been forced to respond. The Tiffin and Masters Review also praised Exposed in many respects, but not for the accusations against RAN, finding... The series offers a penetrating and precise account of police corruption, judicial shortcomings and probes behind the facade of commercial interests. In contrast, its references to political corruption remain vague, anonymous and unhelpful. So, will the critics be satisfied with the outcome, given that the ABC appears to have no plans to take action? Answer, no. As you can see from this headline in the Weekend Australian, nine days ago, in which Bramston took aim at the programme again. The day after he and Milton Cockburn had delivered similar broadsides to the Sydney Institute, where Bramston summed up his criticisms like this. I'm a regular ABC viewer and listener, and I admire many of their programs and their journalists. But I was outraged to see so many claims about the fire, who was responsible, about the park lease and about RAN being made without conclusive or corroborated evidence. Bramston, who edited a book on RAN in 2006, then offered a rebuttal of what he called the program's wild conspiracy claims. Disputing the evidence for arson, where I think he's wrong, but then moving to RAN, where he does have a point. Starting with the claim from Rosemary Opitz, a friend of Saffron's mistress, that the crime boss and the Premier were drinking buddies and really pally. Oh, God. That's Neville. Neville RAN. Did you see that man with Abe Saffron? I did. Friday night drinks. OK. Bramston's verdict on that was... Her credibility, I think, is risible. And the Premier, the idea of the Premier and, the, and a gangster having Friday night drinks, I think it's beyond stupid. And no other person has been produced by the ABC to support this claim. Tiffin and Masters had similar doubts, noting... No solid evidence was given to corroborate her most serious claims and no contrary views were presented. Bramston and Cockburn were also scathing about the claim that RAN ensured a saffron company won the Luna Park lease. And again, Tiffin and Masters agree, noting... The crucial decision was made by the Committee of Senior Public Servants and there is no evidence of RAN interfering with their decision-making. Exposed claim of RAN's corrupt intervention relied heavily on the evidence of one man, as Meldrum Hanna indicated in this tweet. Easter Monday at hospital up coast visiting former Sergeant Paul Egg.
Mr Egg sat down for Exposed ABC and went on record for the first time about the tapes that prove Abe Saffron, Morgan Ryan, Lionel Murphy, Neville Rann interfered in the Lunar Park lease after the 79 fire. Note the word, prove. Egg told Exposed that Rann was a criminal and corrupt and the pictures the ABC used over the interview ensured his accusation hit home. There were very high criminals. We're dealing with the Premier or the judge or both. The Premier was corrupted. The Premier was in touch. He was involved, yes, big time. So how strong is Egg's evidence? Well, his claim is not new. He made it back in the mid-1980s and it was then found wanting by the Stuart Royal Commission, which had concerns about the reliability of his evidence, and by a federal parliamentary inquiry, which recorded Egg's untested claim as Allegation 27, which was summarised by Exposed with incriminating graphics that Tiffin and Masters called misleading. So what's the allegation number 27? Neville Rann and Lionel Murphy colluded to obtain a lease for Abe Saffron of the premises known as Lunar Park. That's in the aftermath of the fire. A High Court judge conspiring with a mobster's associate and the Premier of the state to swing a lucrative piece of Crown land to the mobster. The basis of this key accusation was a conversation supposedly witnessed by Egg between Saffron solicitor Morgan Ryan and High Court Judge Lionel Murphy, which New South Wales Police uncovered through illegal taps on Ryan's phone. But, as Allegation 27 makes clear, Egg did not hear that conversation himself. And the transcript he claimed to have read could never be found. His explanation to Exposed... The transcripts were shredded. They were shredded while I wasn't there. Now, it's possible that is true. Rand did threaten to jail police involved in the phone taps and tapes and transcripts were destroyed. But some transcripts, published by The Age in 1984, as the notorious Age tapes, do still exist. And MediaWatch has a copy, as did Tiffin and Masters. And in 394 pages, there is no mention of the conversation that Egg claims to have heard. Nor is Luna Park mentioned at all. Not once. Whereas Morgan Ryan does ask someone else if Rand could help with another lease on a totally different site. So, why would that conversation survive and the other one not? Now, I don't know whether Neville Rand was or was not corrupt, but some respected journalists are convinced he was. Writing in News Corp's Herald Sun, Andrew Rule, who calls Branston's analysis lame and long-winded, said there was evidence to suggest that Nifty was... Bent as a $3 note. He picked up plenty of parasites and a fortune that is hard to reconcile with an honest politician. It's clear that Exposed also accused Rand of corruption and of helping to cover up murder. And while the ABC and the programme makers dismiss this charge, what other conclusion could the average viewer reach, given that this is one of the final sequences? Essentially, the allegation is that the reason why it didn't go any further was because of corruption further up. There are a lot of powerful people in powerful places protecting Abe. Oh, my God. This is unbelievable. Now I'm getting angry. So it went right to the top, we're told. Yeah. How are you feeling, Tony? Um... I had no idea that... Uh, that you would have uncovered this. Corruption that went right to the top. As Masters and Tiffin found... The cumulative effect of interview commentary, the storyboard graphic and absence of rebuttal content left the reviewers with a strong impression the programme concluded Ran was complicit. So, how serious is that? Well, if it were just a passing comment from a guest on the drum, maybe not that serious. But when it's a glossy $2 million ABC blockbuster, it matters. And how will the ABC respond? Does it accept the findings? No, it does not. Responding to the review, the ABC's head of news, Gavin Morris, accepted the praise, rejected the criticisms, and denied accusing Rand of corruption and cover-up, saying... That was not the programme's intention or assertion. And what about that misleading storyboard tying Rand to Saffron? No again. ABC News doesn't accept the reviewer's opinion that the graphic was misleading. The series did not purport to have proven the allegation. Frankly, we are dumbfounded by that response. 
To argue that the programme did not point the finger at RAN and that those eminent reviewers have got it wrong is, in our view, indefensible. The ABC really needs to do better. In some respects, it was a great programme. In others, it went too far. We're told it will not be taken down and re-edited, but we hear unofficially there will not be another series of Exposed and perhaps no more true crime from ABC News. But now to that other blockbuster genre on our screens, reality TV, where contestants are battling it out on Australian Survivor, Brains v Brawn, or as we call it, Brands versus Brands, and where the product placement is anything but subtle. Where you will enjoy a KFC feast. <laughs> Yeah, nothing like traditional Outback Tucker, uh, like fried chicken, chips and goleslaw. And when you have starving contestants living off lentils and rice, you can bet they're going to give you adworthy reactions. Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, my God! Is this finger licking good or what? Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. If you're a sponsor, it sure is. And all ready to be packaged up into an ad. Australian Survivor, brought to you by KFC. Yep, who needs actors when you've got starving survivors? And it didn't stop with the Kentucky brand chicken. Guess what the prize is based on these reactions? <laughs> Yo. Oh, baby, I'm taking you home today. Wow. <laughs> so, what is it? Friends? Family? A shower? Nope. Top of the range. Isuzu D-Max. Oh, wow. Yep, more perfect reactions and lovely lifestyle shots too. All designed to keep the advertisers happy. But not so happy for viewers who have to put up with blatant and often annoying ads. So, why do reality TV shows do it? Because brands love it. And the more subtle the placement is, the better. TEN's National Sales Director, Lisa Swillis, told the media, re Survivor... You will get to see over the next few weeks just how innovatively and seamlessly we have integrated these brands into the narrative of the show. And how seamless has the brand integration been on TEN's shows? Well, we'll let you be the judge. On TEN's dating reality TV show, The Bachelor... A few years ago, I had a car accident and it was quite traumatic. I can understand why Jay's feeling nervous. Accidents can really rattle you. But this car is full of safety features, so hopefully she can relax and just have some fun. Smooth and subtle, but others, not so much. This looks good. It is good. Yeah. Perfect. Beautiful. And when the product placement goes wrong, expect swift and harsh feedback from viewers. Ladies, if a man offers to cook you dinner and breaks out you foods in a microwave, leave. But don't expect sponsors to disappear anytime soon. As media bar Chris Walton told Media Watch, Viewers are increasingly consuming more content on ad-free channels. So you can see how product placement or brand-funded content is potentially going to become more important. And that's bad news for viewers who'll have to stomach more cringeworthy plugs in their favourite reality shows. And that's before they get to the ads. That's all from us tonight. There's more on our website, including links to the Masters Tiffin Review and responses from the ABC. And don't forget, Media Bytes every Thursday on your favourite social media platform. But for now, until next week, goodbye.